Hi there and welcome to another Parker Adams boat sales walkthrough tour. Uh, we have just taken on this absolutely lovely Fairline Targa 40. Um, this Targa 40 is just behind me here. It's a 2003 boat. Um, it's powered by twin Volvo Penta KAD 300 horse. No, they're not KAD 300s, which are 285 horsepower each. She is a really, really lovely boat. Now, it's been fantastic to have a walk over this boat because I used to own a Fairline Targa 34 up until last year and so it's been great to have a good look over the um, the Targa 40 um, to really see the differences between the two boats um, and I think you'll agree she's an absolute beauty the look and styling of her is absolutely stunning if I come around to this view um, it really does show off incredibly sleek lines um, the sleek lines are a good echo for the performance that you get out of the boat. So out of those twin 285 horsepower engines, um, they'll propel this boat to around about 36, 37 knots, which is really, really fast. In fact, just last week I was on a, um, a Fairline Phantom 40 approaching the needles doing about 21 knots, and one of these boats blasted past me like I was going backwards. Um, I was quite envious of the, the turn of speed on them. If we walk down the, um, the side of the boat, first of all, just to look at the condition overall, um, the condition on this boat is good. Um, there's a few areas which I think could do with being uh, just slightly upgraded or a few little um, tweaks just to make her even more special. And I'll point those out as we go through the tour. Um, but the first thing to mention is the hull condition is really, really nice. Now, 2003 boats, if they're not looked after, um, particularly with the blue hull, you can find that the blue starts to bloom. Um, but there's no evidence at all of that on this boat where it's going slightly milky. It's not like that, it's a really nice colour. So it's clearly been polished and looked after this boat. Um, the Fairline decals on the side here, um, they are a little bit worn. They can easily be re replaced um, and are available from the Fairline um, parts website. Um, and I've also noticed that the Targa 40 logo, the Targa bit is missing, which again could be replaced if you want it to. So round to the stern of the boat. The nice thing about this boat is it's got all original teak, but the teak has clearly been really nicely looked after. It's not lifting in any areas um, and it still has that lovely um, teak look about it, which proves that it's been really nicely looked after. Um, side access to get it up onto the, the sideway, you've got these, these steps that go up here. You've got a transom shower here. You've got a flagpole, nice easy access here. You've got lights either side of the transom, which will light up the transom at night. And you can see good grab handles here. It's so important to make sure that boats have got good access. As you come up here, you've got side access here. You've got a cleat here. Step over, there's another grab handle here. You've got your nav lights here, all stainless steel, and then good, good, good size walkways. They're not the widest walkways in the world, but it's quite easy to walk along, but very, very good handholds all the way along. So let's step back down. Um, another big difference between this boat and the Targa 34 is the fact that you get a tender garage. Now, this tender garage is really, really useful for putting in about a 2.5 metre tender, um, and that just simply lifts up on gas struts. Um, so that is the stern of the boat. Of course, because you've got a tender garage, what you also get is this lovely sun deck area. So you've got space here for a couple of people to enjoy the sunshine. And I have to say, the space on this boat is excellent. When you first walk on board the boat, um, you're, you're noted by you walk up here and then you really, it's a long way forward. You've got a really, really good areas of social space here. You've got this, first of all, this big U-shaped seating here. Now there's two design, two ways you can have the table. You can have the table here, so it's just available for just a drinks table, which gives a nice amount of space to walk through the cockpit area, or you can just flip take that off, open up the table, and when you open up the table you've now got good seating, I think you'd get, well you certainly get eight to ten people around that table, so loads and loads of space there. Um, I'll flick that back again, and I'll just put that glass holder back, back in place there. On this side here you've got a wet bar, so you've got storage locker down here, you've got a gate, I should have mentioned that, gate here that can close off this area to make it nice and secure for children. Um, you've got a fridge down here, and then underneath here, something I love on a boat like this, is you've got a little barbecue. Now these barbecues are absolutely fantastic, they're really really powerful. Um, I was using one of these just a couple of weeks ago on holiday, and they heat up very very quickly. 
Um, the lovely thing about this boat is it's also fitted with a generator. So on some boats like this, when you have the barbecue, um, you can only use it when you're in port. But on this boat, because it's got the generator, um, you can fire up the barbecue at any time. You've also got a sink here as well, and that's got both hot and cold running water. So onto the helm area. So the helm area on this boat, everything is original. So it's got all of the original Raymarine equipment, um, but all of it works. So it's all in good working order. Um, the autopilot works, you've got the tri data, you've got the chart plotter, and I've tested the radar today, and the radar also turns on and scans, so that's excellent. Um, I mentioned about the KAD 300 engines. The 300 engines have the EDC controls. You can see here the, the panel here to put the engines into neutral, into drive, acknowledge the stations. You've got a Simrad VHF, you've got a water meter down here. Um, so everything that you need, and it's a really nice ergonomically designed dashboard. I'm not particularly tall, so I'm only about five foot 10, but you can see I, from five foot 10, that's at my eye height, you've got excellent visibility on this boat. Really, really good. All the dials are nice and easy to hand. Um, engine hour wise, we believe the engine hours are around about 750. Current owner bought the boat on 400, thinks he's done about 350 since, but we're gonna get that verified and confirmed. You've got um, dials, you've got controls here for the stereo. Obviously you've got your leg controls, leg distance, very, very important here um, for controlling these boats at low speed. You've got a um, helm indicator there, it's right in the right place. And then you've got twin fuel tanks on this boat. While talking about the fuel tanks, the capacity on this boat is about 750 litres. So you've got a good mileage range on this boat of around about, uh, about 250 miles at cruising speeds. Upholstery wise, I would consider the, the upholstery to be in good condition, it, but it's not excellent. So I'd say good condition. There is some signs of cracking um, as they do get. This is original upholstery. So it's the sort of thing that um, a new owner could upgrade if they wanted to. Um, there's no rips and tears, but it would freshen the boat up a lot if that were to be replaced. I'll just give a different angle here. It really does show just how much space there is in the Targa 40 cockpit. So let's head on down below, take my shoes off. So as we come down the stairs, you're greeted by a significantly larger space than the Targa 34. This is really noticeable to me, having spent a lot of time on the Targa 34, that there is this U-shaped seating here is much, much bigger. All the woodwork on this boat is presented in very, very nice condition. Um, I've looked over all the woodwork. There is literally only one mark that I can find, and that's just on that door there where I think a drawer has touched it, but that would be easy to touch in with an invisible repair and it would just disappear. So on this side here, I'll carry on, on this side, you've got the controls here for the Ebers Matcher, so it's got warm air heating throughout. Uh, you've got porthole access here. You've got a 240 light switch here. Um, which obviously there's a light on there. You've got a little cubby hole in here and this table can also drop down which makes that into a double bed. There are over carpets on this boat so there's two sets of carpets and if I swing around onto this side you'll see the galley area. Again the galley area is a nice size. You've got a television up here. You've got space here for a fruit bowl or putting your pots and pans on. You've got a double sink. You've got an electric two burner hob here and then a combi microwave oven. Remember I said earlier this boat's got a generator so there's no need for gas you just need to turn the generator on and it fires up all of these cooking instruments. There's lots and lots of storage space look in the cupboards here lots and lots of space here for glasses more glasses you can see it's a party boat the name party girl gives that idea but it's in beautiful condition so we look around here and I really like the grey work surface as well. Some of these boats, this work surface is blue and I think the grey is much, much more modern. You've got a big size fridge here. And then the steps going back up into the copper area. Just underneath the steps on the Targas, if you're not familiar with it, um, they put the bin just under there, which is a very sensible place just to get rid of the bin. It also means you don't get any smells because it's underneath the stairs there. And you've got generator controls. You've got CD player here, um, you could of course upgrade that to one of the, the new Fusion Bluetooth um, head units which would just slide straight into there as a very easy upgrade to turn this into a, a Bluetooth head unit. And that's that side. If we come into the stern cabin first of all, so in the stern cabin here 
Um, one nice feature is if I just move the, the original Fairline document box out of the way, just in here you have a sink. So the guest cabin has its own sink, so there's no need to disturb um, the owners in the master, the master um, ensuite unit. More storage space up here. If I swing around here, you've got two-seater little sofa in the cabin here. You've got more storage up here and then a big, big full-size locker. And then just in here, it's slightly drizzling outside, otherwise I would have put these on the foredeck. But you've got the original sunbathing cushions here. But this room can be um, set up as either a large double or you can have two singles. So it's got the infill here that was specified from you. You can take that out and then you've got two singles there, which is ideal if you let's say you've got two children or if you've got friends over for the weekend, then you can turn that into a large double bed. It's also worth mentioning in here the height, the headroom is really good. So it's a good height here. I'd say that's about a foot, foot and a half taller than on the Target 34. But lots of space still, you've got a nice window there, another window here. And then this dressing area here is pretty large, easily dress in there. And then right at the top here, you've got another skylight. So lots of light coming into this, this room here. If we step back through again into the main cabin, and into the master cabin. Now, loads of good space here. Again, I'm standing here, um, good space here to change. You've got a lit mirror here, vanity unit. You've got big cupboards here and everything presented in really nice condition. It's got this, this lot pale blue suede, but there's no signs of marks or anything like that. That's all original, um, but looking nice. You've got storage lockers all the way above and all the way around light switches at the back of the bed, oh, sorry, the, the, the head of the bed, so you can turn off the lights when you're, when you're in bed. And then you've got um, the skylight here, which can be either pulled across with a mosquito net, or you can turn that into a full blackout. Now, I mentioned earlier about the, um, the heads. If I close that door up there, you can see another door in this cabin. And that's because this door goes through and this room then turns into your ensuite. Good size in here, and you've got a full wraparound shower. So on some boats of this size, this um, cabin here, uh, sorry, this cabin, this en suite, is quite often a wet room. But in this particular boat, you've got this um, nice tunnel system. <laughs> so you wrap around the shower, and it means all the water just goes onto this grate, and then goes down into a grey water tank, and then gets pumped straight out. Uh, there are electric flush toilets, and you've also got quite a lot of storage space in here. I come around to here, you can see this unit. And if I just open that up there, a little hidden feature of more storage behind, so all of your toothpaste, toothbrushes, and bits and bobs can all be stored into there. There's also a heating vent down there. I always look to find heating vents in toilets. It's such a sensible place. Quite a lot of boats miss them. Um, and then in the winter, you step into this room and it's freezing cold. So it's nice to see one in there. So we'll just come back out of there, close that door up. But of course, you do have access um, as the main the main heads, you do have access through this door as well. So you can open up that. They call that a Jack and Jill door. So that gives you a, a different angle of that heads as well. Something I always look for on this age boat um, is the, the condition of the wall linings. Um, having gone through a refit recently on a Fairline boat, um, the wall linings can start to come away at this sort of age, but not at all on this boat. You can see the wall linings are all in really, really nice condition, um, still bonded really, really nicely um, to the wood behind. So overall, I think this boat is in, in very, very nice condition. Um, carpet wise, I think we could do the carpet clean, um, but it is presented in very nice order, particularly about the woodwork. I think the woodwork on this boat really does stand out. Um, very, very few marks on it at all. So I think that's about it for showing you around here. Just so, obviously just a look above my head there, there is a feature that I really like, and that is you can see some LED lighting <clears throat> that has lit up this grab handle here. Fairline's really nicely thought out. They all seem to have this little grab handle here. So if you come downstairs when you're going along and it's rough weather, then you've got yourself a really nice grab hold um, to get through to the heads if you need the loo when you're going along or anything like that. So that's a really nice feature. Um, all the lighting works and you've just got this television unit up here and stored just in this cupboard here is a DVD unit. So you've got a drinks cupboard here, very important drinks cupboard. And then you've got a multi DVD changer there close that up. So just have another quick look around down below here.
lots of nice space. So let's come back up into the, the cockpit. Now I'm shortly going to hand over to my business partner Jonathan um, as those of you that know um, our videos will know that um, I like to talk about how nice the boat is and all the different features and benefits that are on the boat and Jonathan's far more technical than me and is able to talk at length about the engine and the machinery. So I'll show you the access to it. Um, access is just down here. Because you've got the tender garage um, you don't have access um, to the engines where you may think of it as a target typically around there. Now what that also means is it's much quieter. Um, we um, were quite surprised when you turn on these engines how much quieter they are um, than some of the smaller targets because they really are quite a nice long way back. You lift up this here, it's all nicely soundproofed and then you step down into the engine bay just down here. You've got a st stainless steel steps here, you've got the fuel tanks either side and there's that big powerful Onan generator that I mentioned about um, earlier on. The engines are nestling just back behind here, but I'm not going to talk too much about the engines because I'm going to leave that to someone far more knowledgeable than I am in the form of Jonathan Parker. So I'll close that back up again for now. So I think that concludes what I would call the cosmetic walkthrough um, on this boat. Um, I've really, really enjoyed looking over this boat. It's lovely to see the differences between the, the Targa 34 and this larger um, Targa 40. And I think you'll agree, she is absolutely beautiful. They've got really, really nice lines, a great use of space. I come back round to this view again. I just think she's so, so pretty. Really, really nice boat. Now this boat is going to be marketed at 149,995, so 150,000 pounds this boat. And I think that represents a really good value for money on this boat. Um, the market this year has been a little bit crazy. Um, prices have been going up. Um, but I think that's a really, really good price um, for this boat. There's a couple of upgrades that you could do to the boat. Um, the covers, um, they're still nice and watertight, but there are a couple of areas on the covers where the, um, the Perspex has got some um, cracks in it, um, and they're perhaps not as tight as they could be. So a new set of covers is something a new owner may want to consider on this boat, um, and could also consider the cockpit upholstery. Um, but those are really things that I would say they could be done rather than have to be done. So I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough tour. I'm going to hand you over to Jonathan now, who's going to go down into the engine room and talk to you a bit more detail about the um, about the CAD 300 engines in Party Car. Thanks so much for watching. Um, we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Please like and subscribe to our channel. It's really lovely to bring you these walkthrough tours and look forward to seeing you very soon. Many thanks. So as promised, I'm now going to hand you over to Jonathan, who is safely nestled down in the engine bay. Oh, hello there, here I am. I'm sure I've been in there the whole time, but um, I just want to show you around the engine bay. And um, so Andrew's been showing you around the boat and the accommodation, but of course we've got quite a lot down here as well. Um, so first of all, you can see the entrance down here. There's actually steps coming down, um, so you can get quick access to the engine room and you can crawl around down here quite happily. Um, the other entrance though is actually through the um, garage. You can lift the garage um, and then lift the garage floor and you can get full access over the top of both the engines. So when you see me down here now you might think oh, it was a bit tight but you can get really good access around all the engines for intense servicing and things like that um, annually. But for now for doing regular engine checks and things like that this is a really good space to be. So um, let me just come down into the room and then Andrew will follow you down. So, as you can see here, I'm quite scooched down, um, but if you look over to um, my left, your right, you can see there's actually a generator here. And um, it's an Onan generator, um, it's seven kilowatt, so very powerful one, 7,000 watt generator, um, and um, it's only done 68 hours. Um, I've run it up, it runs really nicely, and um, um, it's a really nice addition to a 40 foot boat. Um, over a bit further to um, my left or right, you can see the fuel filters. And you can see that one of the best access is actually to the fuel filters and the fuel filter um, crossovers as well. So if we ever had a problem with a fuel tank where we run out of fuel on one side, we can use all the fuel um, crossovers and actually switch um, from one tank to the other. A very useful item to have. Um, the fuel tanks do have shutoffs on the top of the tanks themselves as well. Um, but we can see there's two big fuel filters, one for each engine, so it, the systems work independently, and then we've got an additional one down there for the generator 
and it's even got a, a, C, um, a fuel shut off valve just next to it um, as well just to be able to be able to change that filter quite easily um, and above there we can see there's a light in here and there's 240 power as well um, up to my right there's actually um, there's a lead plugged into it at the moment it's actually an engine bay heater so just down here there's actually an engine bay heater built in and um, this is a nice addition you can just have it on um, a low very low setting um, for over the winter period so it's already built into the boat um, but the engines themselves they're um, Volvo Penta CAD 300s and um, when the owner bought the boat the um, um, they've done about 500 hours and um, he's owned the boat for um, how many years now three or four three or four years now we can confirm that um, and um, so he think believes he's put on a couple of hundred hours now Volvo Penta um, rev counters they rarely um, show the LCD display anymore it's a very common thing with Volvo and it is quite annoying trying to find what the hours are on engines um, but we believe these have done around um, just from what he has said he's used it for about 700 hours the only real way to know is actually you have to plug in with a Volvo system with their Vodia system and you can actually get the hours off here electronically so it can be done and that would normally be done at a point of a survey or when a Volvo engineer is working on the engines um, but as it stands these engines um, I've had a good look around them I've, I've I've seen them before um, in my engineering days. I have done a few jobs on these on these engines as well, and these particular ones. Um, I have done a few bits on this actual boat as well. So I know they're at the stage now where they actually run well. Um, they do have um, the CAD 300s have common issues like turbo problems and things like that, and supercharger problems. But the actual turbos have been um, um, refurbished on here in the last few years. Um, and I think this, the starboard engine one was done this year and the port engine one was done a few years ago. Um, and also the supercharger, um, which is down here, um, has also um, been replaced um, just a couple of months ago and the other one's in very good condition. So all in all, these Volvo Penta engines are um, up to um, a good standard of servicing and they do generally look to me in very good condition. Um, even the belts are brand new and um, this does have covers going over the belts as well and they're just off at the moment because the current engineer is just um, replacing the belts and giving it a sea trial later today so um, uh, so all in all down here it's quite a nice space um, it's relatively clean um, but um, but all in all it's um, it's quite nice and I think um, hopefully it would be pretty reliable for the new owner um, there's two fuel tanks on the Targa 40. They're um, about 323.75 litres each, something like that. So I think there's a total capacity of about 750 litres. And, um, um, and um, they do, again, have good access on that one there. The other one's a bit harder to get at, but they do have fuel shutoffs on the top, which you can operate from the helm position. So um, as we come back up, you can see it's a little bit more spacious back here again. Um, this is one of the fuel tanks here and there's another one on the other side. Um, the last thing as well really is um, we can obviously have a battery charger here and it's a 50 amp battery charger which is a nice size to have on a boat of this size. Um, and again you can see it's on, it's in lovely condition um, and um, yeah all, everything down here seems to work well. Okay so that's my bit done in the engine bay. Um, I hope you enjoyed the um, me showing you around and enjoy Andrew's um, bit around the boat as well um, so please like and subscribe to our channel and we'll be putting a new video out there soon